Smell is one of the most finely tuned and least understood of all the human senses. It can trigger happy memories, stimulate the appetite, or even attract us to a potential mate. But some odours repel. For the last 15 years, one show viewer Gary Laker has reaped a rotting fish. I first noticed it when a friend of mine used to pick me up for work in the mornings and one morning I got in the car and there were two air fresheners hanging from the sun visor and I said to him messing around, you're trying to tell me something? And he said, not me, my wife. She said that the car stinks every time you've been in it. So what do people say they can smell? People say sometimes they can smell garbage, which is reminiscent of rotting fish, and a lot of times drains, open drains. Incredibly, Gary's wife Elaine has never been able to smell her husband, but for most people, his body odour is so repulsive that the couple are reluctant to go out in public. It's totally destroyed my life, it's destroyed our life. We don't do anything at all. To be honest, I'm not bothered about not going to the theatre or the cinema or whatever, but I would like us to be able to go just shopping together. You know, that would be just nice. Gary's worst fear is that people think he's dirty. In fact, he's almost obsessively clean. Of an evening, I use a very strong antiperspirant that requires washing off in the morning. For my feet, I use a foot spray. I then use two different talcum powders, which I've found combined work well to absorb the odours. I use internal body deodorants. I use charcoal, chlorophyll, mushroom extracts. This is something I can't help, and if people knew about it, it would make life easier. Until six months ago, none of the doctors that Gary had seen were able to come up with a solution, let alone an explanation as to why he smells so bad. Then at last, there was a breakthrough. Last September, Gary was finally diagnosed with a very rare metabolic disorder called TMAU, or fish odour syndrome. A mutated gene means his gut can't break down trimethamine, the compound that gives fish its peculiar smell. How bad is Gary's case? Well, it's had a devastating effect on his life, so it's a very serious, very bad disease for him. When it comes to measuring the TMA in the urine, the levels that have been measured have been more than twice the upper range of normal. Can you do anything to treat it? Absolutely. Having made the diagnosis, then with this disease we can actually treat it. And the way we need to treat it is to try and reduce the amount of trimethylamine entering the body. Gary is now on a very restricted diet, cutting out all the everyday foods that encourage the production of the smelly compounds his gut just can't process. This is the sort of thing I take for my lunch daily. Is that about right for what I'm taking? There's not a lot there, is there? And I think I'm going to make it even harder for you by taking this out, because right. you're good. It's got milk and skim milk in it, so that probably shouldn't be there. But it's not easy. And no. You have to find out what works best for you at the end of the day. He's also taking regular antibiotics to kill off his bad bacteria. For the first time in 15 years, his characteristic odour is slowly beginning to disappear. I'm certain that it's, it's working. You know, it used to be extremely bad prior to that, day after day, and now I do get longer terms when people aren't saying things, so yeah, it's made an amazing difference. Today, Gary has made a decision. He's risking an outing to his local shop. Here we go. Here we go. Incredibly, this is his first visit in more than a decade. I feel very churned up inside. I don't know whether it's good or bad. I need to sit down and think about it. I don't think there was any bad reaction. It's just so difficult when you haven't done it for so long. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. You know, I've never come down here before. I've never even been walked down this road since we've lived here. So it's fantastic. Oh, so I really felt for that poor guy. How is he doing now? Do you know, he is doing so well. It's so exciting because he still has to go out to work. And of course, this is his big thing. He will not do anything else. They've got a house in France, but he and his wife get in their car, drive four miles down to the Channel Tunnel, she gets out of the car and deals with the paperwork, he stays in the car the other end, they, dr they, they drive four hours the other way, so that they never see anybody. It's the only place he goes. And finally, just recently, he went to work and he had to work in a hotel foyer and he would never have done that before. Mm. And he's now feeling so much more confident that he was able to do it. Oh, that's wonderful. Have you ever heard the like, Terry? It's no, never. No. 
I think with footballers, I think they, they, they mask it by putting that sort of Raljex and liniment. To, that's all you can smell in a football dress. You don't know whether you smell or not, do you? Well, I, I, listen, I think I wouldn't have known. I think there was something like that. But I never, I can't remember anything like that. It's just like here. You end up being very clean, don't you? Because you train maybe twice yeah. a day, so you're constantly doing that. And, uh, and uh, these days, uh, everybody look, make sure they get the right uh, yeah. help. Because, well, of course, it's interesting that everybody talks about people being sweaty if they're sporty. But actually, of course, it's only if the sweat stays on long enough yeah. for the bacteria to start working that it starts smelling. So, of course, your yeah. footballers, they're going to be sh shaving, you know, Absolutely. showering every two minutes. Absolutely, yeah. I have done the show, having done a six-mile run, not had a chance to have a shower and just come straight in. More detail. More detail than smell. <laughs>